as we selected ISIS to be the IGP protocol in SP and PLS network for company X, Y, Z. We need to discuss more details about the ISIS design. We will discuss three main points. ISIS levels. When we configure the router with ISIS protocol, we must specify its level. Second design point we need to discuss is the net address. Any ISIS router must be specified with net address to specify its identity in the ISIS network. Third design point we need to discuss is ISIS cost. Now let's get started with the ISIS levels. If we have this structure of areas, area 3 is responsible to let area 1 to connect to area 2. We have three types of levels for the ISIS routers. The first level we have here is level 1. Level 1 ISIS router can receive and have routing information within its area only. It cannot receive any specific information about routes outside its area. R1 cannot have any specific information about the link between R5 and R6 because the link in R5 and R6 resides in another area. It's in area 2. Level 2 routers are responsible to let all types of ISIS routers to communicate to each other. Level 2 routers have specific detailed information about routes within its area and routes outside its area. So we have here R3 and R4 are level 2 routers. They can have information about routes inside their area, area 3, and also it can receive detailed specific information about routes outside its area. It can have specific information about the link between R1 and R2 in area 1 and the route between R5 and R6 in area 2. Usually level 2 routers are called backbone routers and they must have sufficient processing and memory so that they can have routing responsibilities between different areas. Third type of levels is level 1 level 2. Level 1 level 2 routers can work with two levels. Level 1 to establish peering with their connected level 1 routers and level 2 to establish peering with the connected level 2 routers. Level 1 level 2 routers are responsible to let their connected level 1 routers to communicate to outside their area. They distribute default route to their connected level 1 routers. If we have some routers with limited capabilities and limited routing table size, they cannot receive all routes outside their area. So these routers can be configured with level 1 only routers and they can receive a default route from level 1 level 2 routers. The level 1 level 2 routers are connected to level 2 routers for other areas. Back to the topology of MPLS full scale lab. We will have all our MPLS routers enabled with ISIS level 2 routers existing in the MPLS SP network for router PEP1Y, PEP1X, PE3. X, PE4X, PE3Y, PE4Y. All routers in the MPLS network working with level 2. There is no need to configure level 1 or level 1, level 2. All these routers are existing in the SP network and they have sufficient memory, they have sufficient routing table size, and we will have one single area area 3 for all isis routers in the mpls full scale lab all routers with the same area area 3 and all routers with 
same level, level two. Second design point for the ISIS in the MPLS full scale lab is the net address. Net address identifies the ISIS router. Each ISIS router must be identified with an address. This address is called as net address. Net stands for network entity title. Consists of different ports. The first port known as AFI, authority and format identifier. Like the ID or the number of the authority, like the autonomous system number for an organization. It's commonly used as 49. Second port in the net address or the network entity title is the area ID, area in which the ISIS router resides. If the router is in area 1, the area ID should be 0001. If in area 3, the number of the area ID should be 0003. Next port is the system ID. The system ID for each ISIS router must be unique and it's commonly used from loopback address. The loopback address of the router configured with an IP address, usually it's loopback zero. This loopback zero is configured with an IP address and this IP address is converted into dotted decimal notation. We will see later an example about how to convert the loopback address into dotted decimal notation. Final port of the net address is called as N cell. The N cell is known as N selector. It's like the process ID of the OSI stack or the OZ stack, commonly used to be 0, 0. Now, let's discuss how to convert the loopback address of the router into a dotted decimal notation for the system ID. If we have the loopback address as 10.11.11.1, this loopback address will be converted into the system ID. We will convert the first octet number in the loopback address, 10, to be 0, 1, 0. We just add 0 at the left side. Then we take the second octet, 11, and add 0 as well before 11. We do same for the third octet. And finally, the fourth octet, we add 0, 0 at the left side. So each octet will be converted into three digits. This is the system ID, which will uniquely identify the ISIS router. Each ISIS router in the same area must have a unique system ID. ISIS routers can duplicate their system IDs as long as they reside in different areas. But if they reside in the same area, they must have unique system ID. And because we have only one area, area three for the MPLS full scale lab, so all routers must have a unique system ID. And of course, all routers will be with same N cell zero zero. Final design point is the ISIS cost or link cost in ISIS, any link between any two ISIS routers will have a default cost value. The default cost value is 10. In the MPLS full scale lab, any link between any two routers will have the default value 10, and we will leave it as 10 without change. Thank you for viewing this video. I hope it can add a good value to you.